Having trouble passing in Madden 24? No! Then you need to learn how to read the defense. Get locked. Break yourself, fool! Whether running or passing, reading the defense will give you an advantage on every single play. So if you want to learn how to do this and take your game to the next level, stick around after the intro. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor at MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back Money Team, this is Mad Money Shot, Snip of the Mad Cheese as always. In today's video I have an update for a video that I put out every single year called How to Read and Beat Every Single Defense. Now the reason I'm doing a second version of this video this year is because I don't know if EA might have changed some things since the game came out through the various patches that they've done or I just started noticing there are a lot of variations when it comes to reading a defense that weren't necessarily in the game too long ago. So I want to do an update video on that as well as go over the basics on how to read and beat every single defense because this is one of the most popular videos that I put out every single year. But as always, if you guys want to see me continue to do these types of videos, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, and let me know in the comment section as it really helps out the video and the channel. Now I'm going to start this video by going over some of the changes that I've noticed before I go over the basics of how to read the defense. Number one, one of the first things that I noticed is that what formation you're in on offense really dictates how a defensive uh, formation is going to react. Meaning that there's several variable different ways that a defense is going to react based off of how your offensive formational package looks. Now, one of the first things I wanted to go over when it comes to reading a defense that I didn't go over in the first video, and I don't, like I said, I don't know if this changed throughout the year. I think EA actually patched it to be this way. But the offensive formation or the offensive personnel package that you're in has a lot to do with how the defensive reacts now more than it has in the past. I'm currently in an I form close formation. And when it comes to reading a defense, basically all you have to look at most times is the cornerbacks. The cornerbacks on the outside, not the cornerback if there's a slot cornerback. The outside cornerbacks will usually tell the story about what defense that you're in, or what defense your opponent is in, rather. But you can get several different looks based off where your receivers are on the field. This look here, I would consider to be more of a tight look or a close look, because I'm in the I-form close, which means the receivers are closer to the line of scrimmage than in other I-form packages. But this is something you're gonna see a lot, and also in gun packages or single back tag packages where the receivers are really close to the line of scrimmage. You can see how it looks like the cornerback is about five yards off the receiver, which is indicative of a cover two uh, zone, typically, which I'll get to later on. But because the fact that the receiver is in so tight, that's the only reason I'm getting this look. If this receiver were to be motioned out or start to play out wide, you're gonna get what you would normally see from a cover two man look, which is the cornerback is right in the receiver's face looking to press. So that's something that you have to be aware of. Anytime you have a tight offensive formational package like this, the cornerbacks aren't gonna match. They're not gonna be in tight like that to match and be in a position to press. So it's going to make the defense look like a different defense than what you're used to if you're reading it from the old structure, which is five yards off the line of scrimmage is covered through zone. So by comparison, if I were to leave that formation and go to a formation which is more like a traditional spread formation, like an empty base flex, where you have the entire defense spread out and pick that same cover two man, I'll just pick a random play. But if I pick that same cover two man, you'll see a very different look. Well, this time you'll see all the receivers are right in front of their cornerbacks. There's no five yards of separation. They're pretty much all in a press look. And this is because that's one of the biggest differences you'll notice. So based off of what offensive personnel package you're going to be running, you're going to see different reactions from the cornerbacks on defense. So I always recommend staying in the same offensive formation when it comes to reading a defense. It's going to make it easier. You're going to notice these things as you use them more often. Another formation that I used quite a bit earlier in the year was the wing flex offensive offset and the play that I liked the most was probably the uh, the, the PA double post. I'm going to pick that again because this is a specific cover three play. This look here typically cover threes and cover ones will favor the single high safety will favor the side that has more receivers and the more dramatic you are about where you are in the field the more that they'll cheat over like if I have this ball in a hash mark you're going to see he'll typically be in the center of the field because the two receivers are on the short side but if I move that ball over to the other hash mark it's going to be dramatically different as the safety is now going to be cheating all the way over to the left side of the field. You can get this look a lot out of a lot of different packages and it always has to do with the tight end. 
Whenever you have a side that has no receivers and has two tight ends, they're going to be discounted for their lack of speed by the by the single high safety. So whether in cover zero or, or cover one, I'm sorry, cover one or cover three zone, you're always going to have this look where the safety is paying way more respect to the speed of the receivers and the tight ends. And I've put out plays this year taking advantage of this in a play like this, where because that safety is so far over, I can typically uh, get a bomb shot up the seam here with this tight end. So it's really important to be able to recognize that spacing because there's a lot of opportunity when you see that space. So those are two things that I noticed, but I also noticed that where you're on the field also has an effect. So let's go and let's pick another random eye form close play. And then I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna pick uh, cover three. I'm gonna pick cover three sky one more time. Now when it comes to cover three defenses, typically uh, the cornerbacks will be about eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Just once again, I'll get into the, uh, the basics in a moment once I go through some of these changes that I've noticed. But typically, this is your typical cover three look at the single high safety. You got the cornerbacks about eight yards off the line of scrimmage, and they're usually to the outside of a look like this. Once again, if I motion this guy out, they'll be a little more parallel because you know it all has to do with where the receivers are on the field. Once again, the offensive formation does matter. But that eight yards of separation doesn't include if you're closer to the goal line. So obviously, if you're you know five yards away from scoring, there's not as much space. So if I move the ball up to about, you know, inside the five, you're going to notice that these same cornerbacks are now pressing or at least, you know, pressing outside. So where you are on the field, just like offensive formation, where you are on the field is also going to dramatically change the look of the defense. So this look here is still a cover three, but since there's no eight yards of separation to give, they're not giving any. If I move the ball back to the 10, it might be a little bit different. Although once again, it's still going to be less than the eight yards. So where you are on the field really matters. In fact, I would imagine that this, uh, this type of look, this type of press look, I'm not exactly sure what yardage it starts at, but we're going to find out right now. So let's go back to the 15. You see now they're back at about five yards, which is typical of like a cover two. So once again, if you're thinking five yards off the line of scrimmage is a cover two, it's going to be very confusing once you get inside the red zone. Now we're at the 20 yard line. You can see there's a difference at 20 yards and in, they're still in that same uh, you know, cover three, eight yards off look. But the second I get inside the red zone, you're going to see how that look changes. So now on about the 18, and now those cornerbacks are five yards off. And if I get inside the 10, the, I mean, 15, it looks like it changed to, it stayed at about five yards as well. But if I get inside the 10, I think they go straight to a press. So this is called the deep red zone. Now these cornerbacks have been playing right on the line of scrimmage, giving up no free space. So to recap, where you are on the field makes a huge difference in how the defenses react. Whether you're on one hash mark or the other, whether you're all the way inside the red zone or not. If you're outside the red zone, you're going to get the same look. But once you get inside the red zone, it changes. You'll get a different look. And then once you get inside the deep red zone, it'll change once again to the point where all the pre-snap cushions gone and your defense, no matter what defense you're in, they're gonna be playing close up on the receivers as possible because they're not gonna give up any space. And obviously the offensive formation and where the receivers start a play also make a huge difference with how defenses react. All things that are either new or I didn't go over them in, in the previous videos that I made on this topic. And I'm gonna go over some differences that I've noticed in the safeties as well that will help you guys read defenses. But before I get into the next part of the video, I'm just going to let you guys know that I'm going to spend the rest of this video showing you guys how to read defenses from the I-form close because like I said you have to be consistent every formation is going to have a slightly different look on how the defense is going to react to this look if you have two receivers on one side I already showed you it's going to be a different look when it comes to cover three you know and vice versa so we're going to stay in the eye from close I'm just going to pick random plays because I'm not just going to be running plays so I'm going to be on defense here so I can show you guys what this looks like cover two uh, I mean, once again, being on the hash mark, you can see that the cornerback on the right side is a little bit closer to the receiver because there's less field on that side than on the other side. But other than that, what you really want to pay attention to is the fact that the cornerbacks on the outside are five yards off the line of scrimmage. And they're also kind of more worried about the area than the receiver. So the, the cover two cornerbacks are going to, they're not going to be aligned right in front of the receiver because that's not their job. Their job is to cover the area. So you can see they're outside wide of these receivers compared to if I were to switch to a cover two man, where now they're much closer to the target because that's their job. That's a responsibility. So now they're going to be in tighter, even though once again, I'd have to motion the receiver out or the receiver would have to start to play closer to the boundary 
motioned out wider for the cornerbacks to be right in their face. But you can see how you get that same five yards off look from this offensive package based off the fact that it is still a cover two. But like I said, they're not going to match. They're not going to be parallel with the receivers in tight like that. That's not how this all how the defense reacts to this type of formation. So normally, if it's a spread formation like I showed you earlier, they're going to be down in their face pressing. But now, because they're in tight, they can't do that. So they're going to give up a lot of inside releases. They're going to give up a lot of um, you know they're going to have a lot of advantages because of where they're starting to play. Now, some other plays that I want to show cover three is also very unique. If I switch to cover three, here we have, actually I switched to the wrong play. Let's go to the other play. Cover three here, you're gonna get that same eight yards off the line of scrimmage look. And because we're on a hash mark once again, you can see the cornerback on the right there is closer to his target than the receiver on the left. But the, the cornerback on the left is gonna be a better indicator because he's once again playing the area, not the receiver. You can see he's playing outside. The cornerback the cornerbacks are out wider than the receivers because once again that's their job. That's their responsibility. It's not the receiver itself. That receiver could run a flat, it could be Roby's job, it doesn't really matter. So that's what a cover three looks like, even with a you know a base look like this where they're both both safeties are high. Like if I if I were to base a line, I can get it to a single high safety look at some point. I don't know, maybe I'm not hitting the right button. <clears throat> but that's typical of a cover three now cover <clears throat> now cover one is going to be similar somewhat where i can uh, make that same adjustment now another look now, another look that looks just like cover three a lot of times is cover one. Now, you can see once again, there's two receivers on the right side, so that's why the safety is reacting the way that he is. He's all the way over here where the most receivers are because that's the most likely area that the play is going to be. So, this is your cover one look. The difference between this and cover three is pretty obvious. The receivers, once again, are still kind of eight yards off the line of scrimmage, but they're getting closer to their targets because, once again, they're not covering an area. It's not like cover three. You can see cover three, the difference, the main difference, you still got that single high safety here but the main difference is that they're not parallel as much as possible where man coverages they will at least try to get parallel because they don't want to give up too much leverage the second they give up that inside or outside leverage is exactly the area that they're going to get beat in so that's why this is going to be uh the type of look you're going to get once again if i motion out these receivers which i showed you earlier the the cornerbacks will be parallel with them once they're spread out wider to the boundary i don't know why these type formations react this way i really don't i think they do that for run fits probably because if they were to you know line up parallel right in front of the receiver it'd be a lot easier to run outside around them so i think that's why they do that but i'm really not sure so that's pretty much every defense except for cover zero cover zero is probably the easiest one to tell because all of these typically these safeties you can tell i mean you should be able to tell the difference by now between man and zone as far as the fact that when it comes to zone coverage these guys typically are more concerned with covering an area, so they typically aren't aligned. Now, the last defense is cover zero, and this is one of the easiest ones to read because you can see how the safeties look like they're man aligned to somebody. Typically, it's gonna be like the running backs, but they're out wide like this to the point, there's not a lot of other defenses like this where you can see uh, the safeties are gonna be easy to read. I mean, the cornerbacks are still about eight yards off. That's pretty typical. But the safeties in looks like this, which usually have man assignments, will be in all types of weird places. If you're in a four wide, they'll be spread out wide. If they're in a, uh, you know what I mean? Like depending on where the offensive players are, that's where they'll be spread. So this should be one of the easiest to read because the safeties look like they're, they're usually down the box way more, which isn't typical. Like if I were to switch to like, I mean, it's not gonna change now because I already mess, I already moved them, but typically like they'll be way further back if their job is deep responsibility compared to if it's short responsibility in a thing like a cover zero, they'll be down to the box way more so that they can get to the target faster. Now I had to back out so that I could pick a new playbook for the next play, but the last defense I'm gonna go over before I go over like hybrid defenses anyway, is cover four. There's two different cover fours. There's the cover four quarters, which is a matching style, almost like a man coverage. And then there's cover four drop, which is really just like a drop back don't let anything get behind you type of prevent style defense so let's go and let's pick that now when it comes to cover four like this you'll typically see even spacing between the four deep zones and that's because they're all responsible for their own section of the deep field and it's pretty even so you won't see like you know sometimes the safeties will be i mean this is something that won't change too much based off of the offensive formation the only real difference when it comes to cover four drop and cover four quarters you can see are the linebackers spread out but other than that a lot of times 
you might see, and it won't, probably won't change here in a practice mode, but a lot of times you might see, you know, if it's a different formation, a different offensive formation, maybe there's another receiver over here, you may see this safety kind of man align with him more because that's more his responsibility. Or if you see, um, you know, you, you might see the uh, the safeties play down a little bit more or play wider towards a target because that's their most likely target. But they won't get out of position too much because at the end of the day, they're still responsible for whatever receiver comes to a section of the field that they're covering. But that's pretty much the only t difference you'll tell. Cover for a regular, you'll see a little bit more uh, evenly spaced between the four deep zones. Where cover for quarters, a lot of times you'll see they might be uh, cheating to their receiving target. That's probably the biggest way to tell. But it's the same eight yards off the line of scrimmage with the cornerbacks. And it's the same outside leverage because, once again, that's their responsibility. It's the, the receiver isn't necessarily the responsibility of the area is. So now that I went over all the base style of defenses, like the man coverages and the zone coverages, there are a few uh, formations or a few different coverages that are combination coverages like cover six cover three cloud even like a nickel two trap which most people don't necessarily run because that's actually a pretty bad defense you get roasted with that but cover three cloud and cover six are very popular on a look like this you're just looking at the cornerbacks once again you can see that one cornerback on the left side is five yards off the line of scrimmage where the cornerback on the right side is eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Anytime you see two cornerbacks playing at different starting depths, you know right away that it's a combination defense, that one side is going to be different than the other. Now, when it comes to beating cover two, you typically need something to streak and pull back the safety. But other than that, the weaknesses are usually in between the two safeties or above the cornerback to the outside. So as long as you have a streak pulling back the safety, you should be able to beat the cornerback outside with a corner out of some kind. Or like I said, you can often split right between the safeties and win over the middle. Cover two deep zones, whether man or zone, will also come up very weak in run support over the middle. So if your opponent's in a lot of cover two, it's also a good idea to switch to an inside zone and run inside. And this is because the safeties are so far back that they usually take themselves out of the play. Man coverage is a pretty weak uh, run defense as well, so you can always run against man coverage. But when it comes to man defense, you can beat them with just about any audible route in your hot routes menu uh, every route here pretty much is going to win the wheel route the drags the the zig route the in route the out route the comeback the curl they all beat man coverage when it comes to beating cover three and cover four defenses the outside cornerbacks react the same to 10 yard out routes and comeback routes which will get open every single time and you can also win underneath the things like wheel routes and flat routes that will get open underneath these exact same cornerbacks the only real difference is when in cover three you can also throw up the cover three seam which is the space defined between the single deep safety and the outside cornerback just as long as you have a lot of routes pulling those cornerbacks outside so i'm gonna go ahead and end the video there if you guys want to see more videos like this as inf new information comes to light please make sure to be a subscriber hit the like button let me know in the comment section other than that i'll have the original video that i made about this popping up on screen as well as some new content from a previous gameplay so if you guys want to see more just click the links want to show your support then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more link in the description below